How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about The Nice House on the Lake. This is book 7 from DC's Black Label. Uh, this is the first one back from the break. Uh, the first six issues of Nice House on the Lake were put out month after month. But then we got to a nice midpoint. This is the point where the graphic novels will break into. And overall, a good place to, uh, to rest for a few months. So the book's been off for a few months, but it's coming back. And we're going to have the last six issues come out and see how this whole thing wraps up. For those of you guys who have uh, who don't quite remember what was happening, uh, basically towards the end of the last plot arc, the uh, group finally goes to the other house on the lake. They solve a puzzle and get inside. And inside, there's this guy named Reggie, who was one of their friends from earlier. And you find out that he had been helping Walter build this place, but then Walter was erasing his memory after he you know, uh, work, so he'd turn him on and turn him off, and he would, you know, unbeknownst to him, be an accomplice to Walter all this time, and he says that, you know, um, because he helped build this place, he doesn't think that Walter would permanently kill everybody on Earth until after he was sure his experiment was a success, so as long as he's not sure that the experiment's working, he thinks the uh, the damage to the earth can be undone, or maybe it never even happened. So they still have a chance. But then, of course, Walter shows up, and Walter erased everybody's memory, put Reggie at the nice house on the lake with the rest of them, and then uh, they wake up, and it's like a whole new continuity. Now, at first, I was a little worried doing this whole sort of new continuity thing, so many times when books have a fire going, whenever they try to mess with the fire and change what the book's about a little bit, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but with this one, it does. You know, they were getting pretty far, and I was worried that the last six issues would be totally different than the rest. Uh, but they do play with a few things that make you go, huh, if this is what's going on now, what's going to happen, you know? And there are a few other elements still up in the air from the pl first plot arc, and it's this really cool reinvention. So, yeah, the, the fire for the series is still going, but this is a very unique half, and I do like with it being a unique half uh, that that's the, the perfect place to put this break, you know? Uh, if the story was still going one after the other, then having that break, it'd be like, oh no, you killed the momentum, but it's supposed to be a little jarring. It's supposed to be like, okay, wait, things are different now, and yeah, a good place for a break. Uh, let's take a closer look at this cover. We get the symbols, and if I remind you about the symbols, uh, this is the seventh symbol, but we actually skipped over the symbol for the rider, and uh, there was, for Reggie, an octagon symbol, uh, but that's disappeared now. I was hoping it would stay on the cover, but it's gone. So we'll eventually, at some point, have to jump back to the rider, and then I suspect the final issue will be some sort of Walter symbol, maybe? Uh, but anyway, there's the... Uh, the lady associated with the with the symbol, the uh, the accountant, I believe, and she's going to the fridge, and it looks like you know an old school like flash photography in the middle of the night, and there's all these rats there, and her razor because she wanted to kill herself in the last continuity, but that's a little bit different this time, and we'll probably get into that in a second. But yeah, I love how creepy the Nice House by the Lake covers are. And they're all these portrait covers that work really nice together. And yeah, gotta love it as always. Uh, flip it open to the credits really quick. The double page spread is still here and it still looks to be the same. Uh, but we can see on the bottom, James Tinian IV and Alvaro Martinez Bueno uh, are the writer and artist respectively. He also did the cover, and they're both listed as creators of the book. So that's pretty cool. And also, before we get into the plot, I want to show you something in the very back of the book. And they finally gave us a symbol and name guide. There's lots of characters in this book, and I'm so glad they gave us a little guide to what each of their symbols were. Uh, now, Walter doesn't have his symbol on there. I was hoping he would. Um, 
and also Reggie's missing because this is only the uh, the initial cast. But uh, there's our character on the bottom for this issue, the accountant Molly Reynolds. So this is a really nice resource. I really love this, and I'm glad they gave us a little refresher as to who's who in this book and what all their symbols mean. And also, yeah, without having Reggie here, he's also an artist. Is his symbol still the hexagon, or do we have do we have two painters' palettes? I, I'd be curious to know. I think his symbol's still the hexagon, because two people can't have the same symbol, right? Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the book. Now, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this issue is about. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'll analyze the book, but I'll be avoiding the spoilers at the end. We open up with the accountant, and she's wandering through the woods. She's got pink hair and a coat, and... Of course, the fire's still there, but she's telling a story about how, uh, uh, what is it, uh, their names, uh, let me flip to the back, Veronica, yes, that's her name, uh, Veronica and Nora, who was, uh, Norm at the time, were dating, and they were constantly fighting and breaking up, and the two of them, like, Walter wanted to keep their relationship going, he didn't want them to break up, and the two of them would keep trying to get the two back together, and they would fight but ultimately stay together, and these two are really working on the relationship. Now, that's when Molly goes up to Walter and says, hey, I, I really like you, it's too bad I can't be with you. And then later on, back in the fire, um, Molly says that later Walter would contact her and say, hey, maybe we can actually be together. And But by that point, she was already with someone else, and she said she didn't want to risk, you know, she didn't want to lose her old relationship just to see if maybe she and Walter could, could work things out. So you see, you know, the accountant, a very stable move there. Uh, then, Paige, I'm going to have to skip. Uh, but then we cut back to the present at the nice house on the lake, and we see a surprise twist in the new continuity. Walter is there. So yeah, in this new frame, he didn't just erase their memories and put Reggie in. He changed up what they knew because, you know, he has the, the mind-altering powers, and Walter has decided to insert himself into the group so no one knows he's an alien anymore. He erased that memory, which, knowing that he's now an alien living among them in secret, which he did before, but that was all in the past before the story started. Now we get to really relish it and know it, and I really do like this twist that this time around, Walter's with them. I thought that was great, and it really helps this new plot arc. Uh, but also, this time around, they don't know the rest of the world's destroyed, and that's going to keep Molly from wanting to kill herself, uh, so she doesn't know about her, uh, her partner. But also, they don't know the world's destroyed, they don't know their loved ones are there, they think they're just trapped, they think this is only just happening to them. Now, they do still talk uh, to the people, They I think they just call him Santa Claus, I don't know if they... No, they don't know it's Walter. I don't. They don't know it's aliens. They they know a lot less this time around. But they do know that someone is providing for them. And Walter suggests, "Hey, what if we draw up some blueprints and have them build us an extra room onto this house that we can use as a war room and kind of plan out our moves and figure out what we're gonna do in there." Uh, but knowing that Walter's the alien, this is really just what he wants to be done, and he's talking to the people and getting them to see, think that it's their idea, you know, so this is what their captives want, but they think it's their own idea. And also, I won't uh, spoil who it is or what, uh, but there is someone trapped in a dark room 
one of the people has gotten pulled away and they're just uh, stuck in the void now. And I'll let you see for yourself who that is and what. Um, we also get a nice conversation where Walter talks about how he really likes to be with his friends and what other time and place would they get to spend so much time together. And I really do love these moments. You know, Walter's the bad guy, but he still loves his friends and wants to be around them. And he's taking this moment to go, I'm so glad you're here with me. I'm so glad we're together. And I don't want to go terribly much farther in the story. Like I said, I want to avoid the major spoilers. But I do want to show you this scene um, where Reggie says, hey, we're all a really tight-knit group. We all know each other. But um, Ryan, the you know kind of main character of this book, doesn't really know any of the rest of us, doesn't know anyone but you. Why did you invite her here? And Walter flips out, erases his memory, and says, forget you asked that question. And he goes... Oh man, what was I saying? You know, so I feel the thing with Ryan, you know, she's the main character and, you know, this time we don't get a Ryan checkup page, we more get this page where he talks about her. And I think Ryan's going to be one of those things in the story where you kind of just go, oh yeah, she's, you know, one of the girls, you know, she's, uh, she's just a player, she's a main character, she's a point of view character. But I think there's going to be something with her at the end. I think, you know, they keep trying to hint it and people kind of ignore, but I think there is going to be a revelation with Ryan where you realize, oh, she's something more, she's something different. Maybe she does something that she doesn't let people know. Maybe, I, I don't want to say she's an alien, but maybe she's in some way connected to the aliens. I don't know, but I think there's going to be something with Ryan. I just don't know what it is yet. And that probably won't be revealed until the very end. But yeah, why did Walter invite her? Overall, I'm definitely getting sucked back into this book again. And I'm really starting to go, huh, why Why is this like that? Why is that like that? I really want answers and I, I want to know where this is going. So yeah, I definitely can't wait till issue 7. Another great book. And yeah, definitely would recommend finishing off this series, you know, if you've read it so far. Uh, but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Nice House on the Lake playlist. If you want to see me talk about the uh, past issues of the series, I have a review for all the past books, number one through six, and you can go there and uh, find those reviews as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.